Key Folk and Thundercats, this is Internet Personality Vangelis and Super 7's first wave of licensed third-party Transformers Ultimates figures included action masters like Banzai Tron. How was I supposed to resist such a stirring siren song, such a delicious honeypot, such unintended emotional bribery? On the back of some great reports from friends about a couple of the Ninja Turtles Ultimates, I secured my spot in line for a massively layered and lush nest of loving rendered packaging. Super 7 Ultimates definitely strike a strong first impression. I'm rounding up some decimals and cutting through some corners when I say this, but frankly this sculpt is Action Master Banzai Tron non-derogatory. Super 7 hit it. They nailed the very specific, slightly puffed and clean-edged silhouette of a properly iconic, action master-oriented Transformers character. It's hard to describe in more detail, but he feels fun when you pick him up in your hands and give him a little squeeze. The paintwork is also simply poppin'. Banzai Tron is a specific color palette, one that represents a special dopamine flavor, and Super 7's Ultimate's rendition hits every note. While he's packing a pair of fists at the moment, Ultimate's Banzai Tron has got two pairs of pop and swappables, which are fairly simple to uh, pop and swap. Fists aside, there's an asymmetric pair of hands that allow for some proper uchu ninpo, specifically a right splayed and grapply hand and a left jutsu hand. His other pair of hands are for holding things, and I am a fan of the fact that the wrist hinge is rotated 90 degrees on one of these for a proper sword pointing and rifle holding kind of stuff. That that weapon, by the way, is a great representation of the original Action Master's sword-slash-bayoneted rifle. It does have two handles for dual-mode action options, but that handle, or those handles, are both just cylinders. It's not fitted for the gripping hands, positions, and sculpted so much as it's thick enough to create enough friction inside that hand to, to hold it in place. Inside either hand, they both just flex and, and squish against the cylinder. It absolutely works out of the box, but it doesn't feel pleasant at all. Banzai Tron's partner, Razor Sharp, is also present to round out the accessories. The sculpt and paintwork hit every high mark that Banzai Tron landed with aplomb. The pair look great together. Razor Sharp has never had this much love poured into the representation of Razor Sharp since the Action Master line. Razor Sharp in Ultimates, however, is also a statue, not a single moving part, despite some bits looking like they can swivel, or the wholly reasonable assumption that a gun barrel might flip out of the center mass. You can peg the rifle on, thanks to a hole in the sword handle, but it kind of represents a semi-transformed version of the original original combined weapon mode, except that the claws and the, the crab legs are just sitting there in crab position. Nothing else can be repositioned, even though like peg holes are sculpted there, and Ultimate's Banzai Tron struggles to hold this unwieldy mess via a cylinder. Super 7 Ultimate's Transformers articulation segment is, is like hot topic stuff. Well, hot when this came out, but you know, Banzai Tron is inherently hot, so it's kind of, it's still hot to me. Anyway, the articulation here is, is a story of peaks and valleys. Uh, a peak is this neck joint. It's a damn good neck joint, an incredibly emotive one. Uh, a valley is the is over here in the shoulders. The forward and backwards part, that's fine. The outward joint even has this lovely buttery detent feeling going on, but it stops here. And I heard so much about how there were some really clever uh, hidden articulation openers in some of uh, their Ninja Turtles Ultimates on the bulkier ones. So I was thinking, oh, I can't wait to see how this, you know, pops out and opens up the range. It doesn't. This is as far out as it can go, and this butts into that, that kind of... That is, that is a, that is a valley. Uh, over, over here on the elbow joint, you have that similar slight detent feeling. There is a bicep swivel up here, uh, and you can get that full 90 degree bend, but when you move it back here, these things start butting together. Uh-oh, is this a valley? Nah, it kind of turns into a soft peak, because there's also a swivel inside the forearm, so there are, there's a swivel at the top and bottom of the elbow hinge, and that lets you move this piece of bulk slightly out of the way of this piece, and now you can bend the, the elbow 90 degrees just forwards, and that's cool. Uh, another another peak is the uh, the wrist joint afforded by the uh, the hinge built into the hand swaps has a really natural swoosh to the look while having a full range and that looks great. Uh, over here in the in the waist 
you got a great side-to-side -side thing, you got a, an, an ab crunch, and you think, oh man, I can't wait to see the clever thing they did. I, I heard they did on some Ninja Turtle stuff. It isn't there. This is as much as the uh, the mid-torso joint can do. You almost wonder why it's even there. Uh, again, that's a, that's a, a big old valley. Uh, down here in the hips, uh, you can kick forwards, you can kick backwards, you can go outwards. The general range is there. The soft detenting on the outward part of the hips feels a little bit clunky and uh, maybe like they're... Maybe it's, it's not even supposed to be, I'm not really sure, but what I can tell you is that you can totally NECA these, uh, these parts of the, of the hips by having them butt into here and get all, all gummed and scraped like a NECA would, but, but this is Super 7, uh, and so it's, it's always a shame to see NECA-ing outside of NECA, is kind of the way I think of it. There is a, uh, full-on thigh swivel there, and then a, and then a single knee hinge. This is, this totally looks like again. Like I'm like, where's the hidden double hit? No, there ain't. Uh, so that's kind of a shame, just because there there's so much room, and, and I feel like there's a lot afforded by the even the sculpt alone uh, to to have a natural thing in in all these blocks to double hinge, and would have been cool to see that on a, on a nouveau action master, but you don't. And then uh, the foot is on a, a forward and backward hinge that is like. Uh, textbook fine, and you get a tilt because the hinge is a peg going into the foot, so that peg can twist a little bit. It ain't a great ankle tilt because it's extremely situational depending on what you're doing uh, with the uh, the upper part of the hinge. So this dude is like not a brick, nor is he unposable, but every limitation he has feels like it, it could have been like a, an inspiring moment for some cool uh, cheeky little engineering tricks here and there inside the confines of this very retro delicious sculpt to have some modern hidden jointy tricks kind of buried within to also really lay into the theme of it being an action master and instead it's extremely textbook fine. Here's the thing. I like Super 7 Ultimate's Bonsai Tron. I enjoy owning it, and I like looking at it. It's also very surgically, crushingly disappointing to a lot of things I love about the modern toy hobby. The stuff that works, works so well. I still like this piece, despite enormously regretting that I paid the initial list price for it in pre-orders. This is my Action Master Universe Legacy Bonsai Tron. You scale nuts, just calm down. The Nucleon makes him big, alright? Bonsai Tron himself is not a poor, bespoke, collectible piece, it just soberingly reminds me that sometimes my taste is parallel to those of others... to a point. I love the notion of a loving representation of a classic and underrated thing like an Action Master original, matched with modern innovations in articulated design. Super 7 is all in for the first part of that, but it's not like they quote unquote forgot the second part, it was just not of interest to the company by all accounts. That's valid. Also, it bums me out. Razor Sharp is a much bigger sigh for me though. To sculpt in the pegs, peg holes, and every visual indication of a flip-out gun, but leave the piece as a literal statue with a single telltale mold line around the perimeter is like, dog, it is a, a framed picture of nostalgia devoid of youth. The first wave of Ultimates Transformers was a rocky road that Super 7 has already reacted to, implementing feedback on upcoming releases as a result, so bear that in mind. That said, if you catch this guy on sale, he's the standout star of that first wave, and a lot of fun despite so much baggage hiding in the corners of his enormous shipping box. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and hey, I am excited to see where Super 7 Ultimate's Transformers goes. I think a lot of the feedback was unforeseen on their part, and I believe these folks have the chops to slip some impressive hidden joint ranges in between some boxy bot limbs. Hit that tarn out of the park. You can do it. I believe in you.